Far beneath the surface, in a world so dark the sun can never reach, lies an ancient realm. How do creatures survive in this pitch-black abyss? What keeps them alive where pressure crushes anything in its path? From glowing anglerfish to giant squids, what are they? And how do they endure? The deeper we go, the more we uncover, and the more we risk. We're not just exploring, we're pushing into a world where the laws of life bend. Are the treasures here worth the danger? Will we uncover secrets that change everything? Or unleash something we can't control? As we dive deeper, the line between discovery and destruction grows ever thinner. The ocean is divided into several layers or zones based on how deep the water is. The top layer is called the sunlight zone. This is where the water is shallow and sunlight can still penetrate. The sunlight zone stretches from the surface of the ocean to about 200 meters below. In this zone, there is life everywhere. You'll find schools of fish, dolphins, sharks, and even whales. Coral reef and kelp forests thrive here. This zone is home to a variety of colorful fish and plants, and it's where most ocean life can be seen with the naked eye. Below this, we enter the twilight zone. It stretches from 200 meters down to about 1,000 meters. Here, the sunlight is very faint and it gets colder. The twilight zone is home to fish that have big eyes to see in the dim light. Lanternfish and other bioluminescent creatures are common here. As we go deeper, we move into the midnight zone, which starts at about 1,000 meters and goes down into 4,000 meters. No sunlight reaches this deep. The temperature is freezing and the pressure is immense. Creatures like the giant squid, anglerfish, and viperfish live here, adapting to survive in total darkness. Below this, we reach the abyssal zone at 4,000 meters to 6,000 meters. Life here is rare and unusual, but animals like deep-sea starfish, sea cucumbers, and certain species of squid can still survive. The deepest part of the ocean is the Hadal zone, which begins beyond 6,000 meters. This is the realm of the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of Earth's oceans. Life here is almost unimaginable. The creatures that live in the Hadal zone are built to withstand extreme pressure and cold, such as snailfish and amphipods. For most of history, we didn't know much about these deep ocean zones. They were out of our reach, but then, in the late 1800s, during the HMS Challenger expedition, scientists made a breakthrough this was the first major scientific expedition dedicated to studying the deep sea. The ship sailed around the world, collecting samples and discovering new life. The team found that there was indeed life in the deepest parts of the ocean. But the real game changer came in 1960 when two brave men, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh, descended to the bottom of the Mariana Trench in a small submersible called the Trieste. The journey took them almost 11,000 meters down to the deepest point on Earth. To their surprise, they found life, proving that creatures could survive even at extreme depths. Today, thanks to technological advancements, exploring the deep sea has become more common. We have developed specialized robots, submersibles, and remotely operated vehicles, ROVS, that can travel to depths when once thought unreachable. These vehicles send back footage and bring up samples of creatures and minerals. The famous Alvin Submersible is one such tool that has taken scientists deep into the ocean to explore places like hydrothermal vents, where life thrives without any sunlight. These underwater explorers allow us to learn more about life beneath the waves, even in the most extreme environments. Now, you might be wondering, how do creatures survive in the deep sea where there is no light and extreme pressure? The answer is simple. These creatures have adapted in amazing ways. Many deep sea animals can create their own light in a process called bioluminescence. 
Anglerfish, for example, have glowing lures on their heads to attract prey. This light helps them survive in complete darkness. Barrel eye fish have transparent heads, allowing them to see all around them. The giant squid is a true giant of the deep, with tentacles that can reach up to 10 meters long. Despite their size, these squid are elusive and rarely seen by humans. The Dumbo octopus is another fascinating creature with its large flappy fins. It looks like it's flying through the water. Deep sea creatures live for a long time and grow slowly. This is because food is hard to come by at such depths. Some animals, like deep sea sharks, can go for months without eating, while others have developed the ability to survive on very little food. But while the deep sea is home to many strange and wonderful creatures, it is also a very fragile environment as human activity can easily cause damage. One major concern is deep sea mining, a practice that has recently started to get a lot of attention. Deep sea mining simply means extracting minerals from the ocean floor. The deep sea is rich in valuable metals like cobalt, nickel, and manganese, which are used in making everyday items such as smartphones, electric cars, and batteries. As our demand for these materials grows, some companies are looking to the ocean as a new source of resources. They use machines to extract metals from the ocean floor, hoping to meet the rising demand for these valuable minerals. However, there are major concerns about the effects of deep sea mining on the environment. The ocean floor is home to many delicate ecosystems. Mining these areas can destroy habitats and harm the creatures living there. The process of mining also stirs up fine particles from the ocean floor, which can block the sunlight from reaching plants and other organisms. This can create a ripple effect, harming entire ecosystems. In addition, we don't know the full extent of how mining might impact deep sea creatures. Some creatures, like the giant tube worms near hydrothermal vents, rely on the chemicals released by the ocean floor to survive. By disturbing these vents, mining could disrupt their food supply and possibly lead to extinction. Some scientists argue that we should focus on developing alternative materials and more sustainable mining methods rather than exploiting the ocean. We have only begun to understand the deep sea, and once we damage it, it may be impossible to repair. Despite the risks, many people are still excited about the possibilities of exploring the deep sea. As we continue to develop new technology, we are able to map more of the ocean floor. More than 80% of the ocean remains unexplored. And with every discovery, we learn more about the hidden world beneath the waves. Some even dream of living in underwater cities, much like astronauts living in space. But as we venture into these unknown depths, we must remember the delicate balance of life in the deep sea. And that was the story of the deep sea. Not just a glimpse, but a journey into the unknown. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The Nature's Diary for more amazing stories of our world. See you next time.